Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about torque test and torquing specs based on the 2020 code. This can be found in the description below, but it's going to be found in section 100. Basically talking about that we need to, uh, to torque things based on the standard that the manufacturer gives and the acceptable industry standard. Okay, and there is some extra documentation in the code book on where we can find things if it's not documented. So first off, we always want to say guys, make sure that you are getting training from your facility, your qualified personnel at your company. This is for review purposes only. This is not a training video. This is a review video for people in our company. Now, hopefully it's found useful for a lot of people, but it is not a training video. We're not accepting any responsibility for your training. This is not to be used in training purposes. It is to be used only for review purposes. So first off, we're gonna make sure that we've locked out our main breaker. And I usually put a lockout on the actual disconnecting means of the system. Then we're gonna go ahead and, and check for um, voltage here. I always recommend having a headlamp so you can see inside the panels. We're here at our training facility that is everything's dead in this particular facility, but we're gonna go ahead and kind of go through it. So we're gonna use the one, uh, the three-step process for testing. We have a proofing unit here. You could use a plug in the house, whatever that might be, to test and make sure we're safe. We're going to go ahead and test, make sure we see 240 volts. We're going to come over to our breaker. It is now on. Make sure you've got an on breaker while you're doing it. Go ahead and test. Make sure there's no voltage. And then we're going to retest here at the item. Okay. It is not sufficient to use a sniffer. A sniffer is a great tool to test um, non-conductive testing. You can also use your meter in some cases that have non-conductive testing on there. So we can test here, make sure we have voltage, check here, and then check here to make sure everything's dead, and then test with our meter, but we always back it up with a meter. Now, when we deal in torque testing for panels and things like that, we're normally going to be dealing with a torque screwdriver. Um, usually these can be found from 10 to 50 inch pounds. Inch pounds are different than uh, foot pounds, guys, so we remember that. We're going to go into that a little bit more as we get down the line. So we're going to come in here. I recommend getting the little extra uh, extensions here to get into the breaker. Sometimes that tip right here is not able to fit inside the breaker. So I definitely recommend getting these. I get these at Harbor Freight and then picking the appropriate tip for what you're trying to do. It happens to be a, a, a square drive for these particular breakers. And if I look over here at my breaker, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but right on the side of the breaker, it tells us that if we have, you know, um, number 10 wire, that we're going we're gonna to torque this to 20 inch pounds. So this one tells us 14 to 10, we're going to do to 20 inch pounds. Um, eight, we're going to do 25 pounds, six is going to be 20, you know, 27 pounds, inch pounds, sorry, inch pounds. So it's found on the breaker. We can also find the same information on the front of the door. So the door also gives us torque specifications for all the items and a key on where to find those. So it's going to tell us what size breakers we have, what wire size, and all that can be found right here. Okay. We're going to go over that a little bit more once we get to the other box here. So we're gonna set our torque screwdriver. So we're gonna come in here. We pull down on the top, we're gonna to open it up and we're gonna spin it until we get to 20 inch pounds. So 20 inch pounds is on there. We spin it until it gets to the zero. So there's numbers around the bottom here and they match up with numbers here. So if I needed 21 inch pounds, I would go to the one and line it up with the 20. Okay, so dead center in the middle. So we're going to bring that back to 20. Hopefully you guys can see that. So we pull down to unlock and then go ahead and go from there. We're going to put it inside the screw here. We do not want to use power tools here, guys. We want to use hand tools so we're not breaking these soft metal items. So we're going to go ahead and twist. And you'll hear the click where it actually jumps. I'm going to try to do that again. If you can get up above, maybe see how this works. a little harder here, guys. But what I want to show you is that you'll see... As I tighten, the tool actually jumps. It's actually going to jump over. And that means that item is now torqued properly. Okay? Now, if they require that you do it on a main breaker, you want to make sure that the meter has been removed by your area um, energy provider. So kind of make sure of that. 
So that's, we've torqued our solar breaker. Now they will usually make us come over and torque the breakers that are inside of our combiner box. Again, the combiner box has all of our torque specifications right on the wall here. So it has all our wiring diagrams and our torque specifications for everything. Again, we're gonna have all of our breakers here are that 14 and below. So we're gonna use 20 inch pounds. We're gonna come up here. We're gonna stick our, our uh, we're just gonna do one breaker here. Sometimes they'll make you do all the breakers. Sometimes they'll make you do one. Come in here and torque that down until we get that one. And come in here, get all the way in there and you'll see it torque and skip on you, which means it's actually torquing that guy down to that 20 inch pounds. Now, when it comes to the lugs and the other items here, we'll have to switch to a, you know, a straight bladed screwdriver. But again, we find that information over here. You'll see your neutral lugs and your main lugs. Main lugs are what we're dealing with here. And we want 45 and 50 inch pounds. So that'd be maxing out this tool. So a lot of times what's nice is it comes with this little pry bar. We can put that in the back. And so if we're doing these, we have a little bit more torque we can put on them to really get those 50 and 45 and 50 inch pound torques. Now, when it moves up into heavier lugs, so lugs that are not the standard size. So we get into an item like this, and this guy says we need 250 inch pounds. Like I said, our screwdriver only goes to 50. So we're obviously gonna have to go up to something bigger. So we're gonna first start here, getting our item. We always, with main breakers, because the torques are so high, wanna make sure we're using a tool that is a hand tool, no powered tools here. We're gonna go ahead and tighten it down to what we think is reasonable, okay? We're gonna go ahead and pop our socket off there. We're gonna to come to our torque wrench. Now, most of your torque wrenches, your actual torque wrenches itself, are gonna be based on foot pounds, okay? So foot pounds is what we're gonna use here. We're gonna to have to go on to Google. Just Google it, there's tons of calculators on there that will tell you how to convert inch pounds to foot pounds. Now this one says 250, that's 20.7 inch pounds. We're gonna go just a little past, again, we've got the same thing. We're coming up here with our, with our foot pounds and we're gonna go 20 plus just a little bit to do that. Some inspectors will tell you to do 20, some of them will tell you to do 21, either one's fine. We're gonna go ahead and put our extension on with our um, hex head here, okay? And remember, our lock is on the bottom. We don't want, so our lock twists down here. So we twist down and tighten down. And that locks this guy in place so it can't twist while we're working with it. And make sure that guy's twisted down. We want to make sure we've got the socket on the right spot. We're going to go ahead and slide it in. Make sure it gets all the way engaged. We're going to push. And you will hear the torque, okay? Hopefully you guys can hear that. So you'll see the little knob right here you'll actually feel it clench over and pop back. Clench over and pop back. So that's really important, guys, that you watch that. You do not want to push past there. You can physically push past there. Once it clicks, you can keep pushing. You do not want to do that. These torque specs are based on the wire size that you're using. You can actually damage the wire, damage the lug, and the breaker by over-torquing. When we have under-torquing issues, things that are too soft, and you'll see a lot of guys out here with three inch wrenches getting as tight as they think they, they have to get it and it actually needs to be worse. They did a big study and they found out that after testing a whole bunch of people that said they knew they could get it right, they were only about four or five percent that even got it close and they figured that was basically up to luck. So most people are not able to torque to the standard they need to unless they're doing that same standard every day and even then you're required to use a torque tool to do this process. You're not allowed to do it by I think it's close. That could either be too much, which could cause problems with the breaker or damaging, stripping out the bolts, or too little, which could cause arcing issues. And this is probably the number one arcing issue I come across, is a panel that's been under-torqued or not, um, they didn't use a torque wrench on and actually left that lug undone. We'll usually start seeing breakers tripping, things like this. So this is one of the first things I see when I see breakers tripping the panel, arcing, sparking, things like that. I'm going to check my torques to make sure that that breaker has been torqued properly based on that 2020 standard. And again, look in the description below and we'll put that, that standard in there, the codebook reference, in the bottom there so you guys don't have to remember it. 
Hopefully this was helpful, guys. Remember, this is a review video, not a training video. Using the equipment we have here is what we have at our facility. You may be using different equipment or digital uh, torque wrenches. That is fine, too. But in our facility, we use the mechanical ones. They do have to be certified every year. So make sure that they're either being recertified. Usually what we end up doing is just repurchasing every year. So they're up to date. So as always, guys, have a great day. Be safe out there, and we'll talk to you later.